Welcome Gamer Nation. In this video we are doing Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six, which is a video game featuring the Marvel Comics characters Spider-Man and the Sinister Six. It was developed by Bit Studios and published by Acclaim Entertainment under the LJN banner for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1992. Versions of this game were also released for the Master System and Game Gear by Acclaim's Flying Edge Division. The game is loosely based on the story arc of the same name, which was published in the Amazing Spider-Man issue 334-339 in the early 1990s. Plot Dr. Octopus is setting his master plan into action to take over the world with the help of the Sinister Six. Spider-Man manages to defeat all of them and save the world. Gameplay the player controls Spider-Man through six side-scrolling levels with a member of the Sinister Six, Electro, Sandman, Mysterio, Vulture, Hobgoblin and Dr. Octopus at the end of each level as a boss. Spider-Man can jump, punch, kick, duck, climb certain walls and trees, shoot webs to swing on and collect web fluid to shoot square web projectiles. The levels are generally straightforward side-scrolling action, although occasionally a particular item such as a key or a detonator has to be found. Spider-Man has only one life in the NES version, but also has one continue. There are no icons available to restore energy, however, defeating several enemies can restore Spider-Man's power bar. Ports In comparison to the NES version, the Sega Master System version is easier as certain items were moved, typically to easier places to find. Some enemies are taken out, some jumps are redesigned to be easier and Dr. Octopus and Mysterio now only have one health bar versus the NES version where they would regenerate a few times before being defeated, among a few other changes. The Game Gear version is identical to the Sega Master System version except that the screen shows a smaller portion of the level, which makes it harder to see incoming projectiles. Reception Nintendo Power commented on the NES version of the game, praising the graphics while stating the play control was weak, commenting that you can release what looks like a perfect punch and end up swinging right past your enemy. Did you know inspiration for the costume? The iconic red and blue Spider-Man costume was inspired by a pulp magazine character called the Spider, known for his red and black outfit. Steve Ditko, Spider-Man's co-creator, altered the colors to red and blue to make the character more heroic and appealing. The original costume design, before settling on the classic red and blue design, there were several early concept designs for Spider-Man's costume. One notable concept featuring a red and black color scheme resembling a spider's natural colors. First appearance of the web shooters. Spider-Man's web shooters, which allow him to swing through New York City were originally part of the costume design. In the early concepts, however, Spider-Man's ability to produce webs was organic, similar to how a spider generates silk. Marvel's initial rejection When Spider-Man was first pitched to Marvel Comics, they initially rejected the character concept. It wasn't until later that they reconsidered and decided to feature Spider-Man in Amazing Fantasy issue number 15, which became his first appearance in 1962. The cultural impact in the Vietnam War. Whoa, who knew about this? During the Vietnam War era, Spider-Man became an unlikely symbol of protest against the war. In the Amazing Spider-Man issue 96-98, published in 1971, Spider-Man takes a stand against drug abuse, indirectly addressing social issues prevalent at the time. Secret Identity Exposure In the comic storyline Civil War, which was featured in 2006-2007, Spider-Man publicly reveals his secret identity as Peter Parker, causing significant ramifications for his personal life and relationships. Spider-Man has appeared in various alternate universes and timelines in Marvel Comics, including the dystopian future of the Spider-Man reign and the noir-inspired Spider-Man noir universe. Aside from comics, Spider-Man has appeared in numerous adaptions across different media, including television, series, movies, video games and even stage productions further solidifying his status as a cultural icon. These facts offer a glimpse into the intricate history and evolution of Spider-Man, highlighting some lesser known aspects of the character's creation, development and impact on popular culture. The original Spider-Man game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, also known as NES, released in 1990, was generally well received critically but information on its financial success is somewhat limited. 
The game was developed by Rare LTD and published by LJN. Some people don't like LJN. The featured side-scrolling action gameplay where players controlled Spider-Man through various levels, battling familiar villains from the comics. While exact sale figures for the NES Spider-Man games are not readily available, it's important to note that during the NES era, licensed games like Spider-Man often sold well due to the popularity of the character, and often the games sucked, but most of the time, or some of the time there were some true gems. Spider-Man was a well-established superhero with a large fanbase, which typically translated into solid sales for video game adaptions. Despite LJN games often being criticized for their difficulty and design choices, Spider-Man for NES is remembered fondly by many gamers for its challenging gameplay and faithful adaption of the Spider-Man universe. Its critical acclaim and the popularity of the character suggest that it likely did well commercially, although specific financial details from that time may be scarce or undocumented. Here are some LJN games that contributed to the company's negative re reputation. Friday the 13th was released on NES 1989. This game, based on the horror movie franchise, is infamous for its confusing gameplay mechanics, repetitive gameplay loops, and overall lack of polish. It received criticism for being difficult to navigate and frustratingly challenging. Also number 2, Jaws 1987, another licensed game based on a popular movie, Jaws for NES received criticism for its simplistic gameplay and repetitive nature. Players often found the game lacking in depth and engaging mechanics, leading to disappointment among fans. Number 3, The Karate Kid, NES, 1987. Based on the movie franchise, The Karate Kid for NES was criticized for its awkward controls, unintuitive gameplay mechanics and difficulty spikes. It struggled to capture the spirit and excitement of the films it was based on. And let's do a last one, number 4, Back to the Future, 1989, adapted from the popular movie series. Back to the Future for NES faced criticism for its confusing gameplay objectives, poor controls and lack of engaging content. Players found it frustrating to navigate and complete. These games among other published by LJN contributed to the company's reputation for producing licensed games that did not always meet the expectations of players in terms of quality, gameplay, experience and overall enjoyment. Despite this reputation, some LJN games have garnered nostalgic appreciation over the years showcasing the varied impact they had on gaming culture during their era. So they like to pump out licensed games because they knew people would buy them and they didn't do a lot of research sometimes or yeah, it didn't match with the game. And that's what they're talking about here. Yeah. Name some of that games you know about in the comments. Some background information. Spider-Man made his first appearance in comics in Amazing Fantasy number 15 which we said earlier which was published by Marvel Comics in August 1962. Created by writer Stan Lee and artist Steve Ditko, Spider-Man quickly became one of Marvel's most iconic and beloved superheroes. The character's origin story revolves around high school student Peter Parker, who gains spider-like abilities after being bitten by a radioactive spider during a science experiment. Initially, Spider-Man was depicted as a teenage superhero dealing with everyday problems alongside his crime-fighting adventures a concept that resonated with readers and helped differentiate him from other superheroes of that time. His popularity grew rapidly, leading to the launch of his own comic book series, The Amazing Spider-Man, in 1963. Since then, Spider-Man has become a cultural phenomenon, appearing in numerous comic books, animated series, movies, video games and other media, solidifying his place as one of the most recognizable and enduring characters in popular culture. The production time for video games can vary widely based on factors such as the complexity of the game, the size and experience of the development team, the technologies involved, and the specific goals and deadlines set by the publisher. For Spider-Man, Return of the Sinister Six for the SNES, NES sorry, which was released in 1992, specific details about its production timeline are not extensively documented publicly. However, during that era, typical production times for video games could range from several months to over a year, depending on the scope and resources allocated to the project. Games often underwent phases such as initial concept and design, programming and development, artwork and graphic creation, playtesting and debugging, and finalization for release. For licensed games like Spider-Man, Return of the Sinister Six, developers 
often had to adhere to timelines dictated by both the publisher and the licensor, in this case Marvel Comics. This sometimes meant working under tight schedules to coincide with movie releases, comic book events or other promotional efforts related to the licensed property. While exact details about the production time of Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six NES game aren't readily available, it would typically have taken several months to develop, test and finalize a game of its complexity and scope during the NES era. So we had lots of fun playing this game and completing this game. It's not one of the best games, but it is kind of fun for what it is. They didn't try anything amazing, they did try to make a Spider-Man game. Six of the villains are inside here and I give it a B plus. Ah, just kidding, it's an A from me. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please tell us in the comments if you'd like to see any of the other games. And subscribe for more retro gaming content. Also remember to always be happy gaming. And I hope you enjoy the Spider-Man tune for the rest of the game.